Hi! Welcome to our channel. Is there a trip that you've been eyeing to go to? The first thing you should do is search for flights. There are 8 things you should consider when booking a flight. Number 1. Budget Well, flights can be the biggest or the second biggest expense for your trip. When you have a budget, you can use it to filter where you can go, which airline you want to take and which class you want to fly in, whether economy, business or first. This can help you make better decisions. Personally, I like to use Skyscanner. I'll use it to compare which airline is the best for my trip and then from there, I'll go to the airline website and purchase the flight tickets. You can also use Skyscanner to explore which destination is the cheapest during the month that you want to travel. One of the most crucial details to take into consideration when booking your flight is travel date and time. This is because some of you may have your own preferred season to travel. You have to bear in mind that some seasons are more expensive than the other. For example, traveling in June and December are more expensive than the other months. In addition to that, sometimes even though there are multiple flights on the same day, the price may vary according to their departure time. So you would have to survey first before you decide on when you want to travel and what time you want to depart. My suggestion is you can try these few search engines to survey the flight tickets. You can try Google Search, Skyscanner and Expedia. Number 3. Transit and Layover a layover is a stop that you make for a short time at a connecting airport en route to your destination. This would mean that you would have to transit through a place to get to somewhere else. When booking a flight, the total transit time is one of the first things that you notice. Obviously, a shorter transit time would be ideal because the less time you spend traveling, the more time you can spend at your destination. However, if it's too short, you might actually miss your connecting flight. Let's say if your flight is delayed due to bad weather, for example. So the most ideal scenario is a transit time of around one or a one and a half hour because this is not too short and not too long. The next thing to consider when booking a flight is baggage allowance. Speaking from personal experience, I am not a light traveller, so I tend to overpack. To avoid this, I always make sure to know the baggage allowance first before starting to pack. By knowing this, I will be able to know what I can actually bring and how much room or space that I need to set aside for the things that I want to buy at my destination. You have to bear in mind that most of the airlines provide a standard baggage allowance of around 20 to 25 kg. Some airlines, however, do not provide baggage or include them in the basic fare price. So make sure to read the terms and conditions before purchasing your flight ticket to avoid any incurring additional costs at the end. Number 5. Seat Selection Even if an airline website make it appear that you have to pay for a seat, you don't actually have to do that. You can decline and opt for a free seat assignment during check-in. However, for one of those long-haul flights, sometimes the difference between one seat and another can make a huge difference to the quality of the flight. A badly positioned seat may mean more noise, less space, and even greater disturbances. Hence, it is worth taking care of where to sit on a flight. Each airline can fly with a different model of airplane, and even the same airplane can have a different layout. What I personally like to do is to go on a website called Seat Guru. On the main page, what you have to do is find the airline, select the flight date, and key in the flight number. They will provide a detailed layout and recommendations of the best seats and seats that you have to avoid due to several constraints, for example, very poor leg space. Some of you might get hungry during flights, especially for those who decide not to eat at the airport because the price there is quite expensive. Not to worry, you can check with your airlines if they do provide in-flight meals, especially for those going on long-haul flights. If they do provide, there is usually a variety meal selection for you to choose from during your flight booking. Some airlines requires you to pre-book your meal and some just allows you to select the meal during the flight. However, However, if you opt to select during the flight, the probability of your preferred meal going out of stock by the time the food cart reaches your seat is quite high. My suggestion is, you should pre-book your meals especially if you're going on a long-haul flight. Just in case your trip is cancelled, it's essential for you to know what is the refund policy for your flight. Depending on the airline, ticket fare can be refunded with a cancellation fee which differs according to the situation, whether before departure or after departure. It's best to book direct 
directly with the airline as this would provide better transparency and easier claiming process in comparison to a third party. The last thing to consider when booking a flight is the airline's reputation. This is important so that you know what to expect from the airlines you've chosen. By knowing the flight's reputation, you will also be able to avoid the ones with known issues such as misplaced baggage and frequent flight delays. You can check on the airline's reputation by going on social media and also the easiest way of all is to go on Google review. So there you have it. Those are the eight things you have to consider when booking a flight. If you want more tips on how to make a travel budget, we'll link the video here. So if you like the video, do hit on the like button. If there's anything you miss, go ahead and comment down below. And if you want to see more of us in action, do hit the subscribe button. Bye. See Bye. Ya.